would like to speak of something that is so intrinsically simple, yet it may seem next to impossible in the beginning. And what this is, in a sense, is nothing new, but the revelation or the recognition that the experience that I choose is a myth that is dependent. It is dependent on falling into the contraction of the reference point, which is dependent on latching on to conditioned desires or fears. Prior to the contraction of conscious awareness, that which is purely aware, eternal and present, it is quite obvious that choosing decision-making is all happening by itself. That my involvement in it is dependent on my forgetting. And the fast track, a track of laser speed, which in truth is not threatening at all, and everyone recognizes it, because you are not the chooser to begin with. So on the one hand, nothing changes. <clears throat> but simply giving up the identification with making choices. It is something from a mental perspective, once it has been seen, I assume everyone in the room has seen this. It seems kind of like a no-brainer. <laughs> that the experience of making choices is the perpetuation of the experience of separation, which is the perpetuation of suffering. The letting go of it is not really letting go of anything because in reality you have never made a choice because you cannot find the eye that chooses. And yet the nature of the seduction is so deep rooted that carrying out something that in fact is so simple is possible for the very, very rare one. Even though it is so obvious, even though there is the recognition that there is nothing threatening involved. And deeper than this, the letting go of relationship with the illusion of choice enables the attention to come to rest in the unchanging beauty that you have surrendered to when the addiction of following the story of choice is offered up.
it is another way of saying the allowance of life to carry itself. giving up the involvement with the illusion of choice is stepping into the present. Stepping into the present is stepping into the heart. While so simple, if this possibility, which is the deepest of possibilities, seems impossible for you, the next closest thing is whatever master is the representation of what feels truest and safest for you. It is always to turn to that relationship and wait for all guidance to come from that. It is living the choiceless life. which is being let out of the cage, which is the doorway into living in the heart, which reveals the nature of what is untouched. And it is not like anything is being asked of you. It is simply honoring what you have already recognized but recognizing it at moments and honoring it as the life's mission are two enormously different things. It's giving up a false burden in which the mind is preoccupied with most all the time. It does not have to be a decision that is, from the mind's perspective, a big decision. It can be very mundane. This play of the appearance of decisions is happening throughout the course of the typical day. It is all this facade that siphons the attention and brings forth the life of a separate character that in reality is not even there. It is offering up relationship with an illusory future.
can see it in the eyes of the one who has given this over because you cannot find conflict or issue in the face. It is like looking into nothing. Because nothing is your nature. And the illusion of making decisions creates an ongoing experience of something. Being nothing is being yourself. The feeling of nothing is the feeling of everything. Everything is not making decisions. Decisions are experienced when everything is shattered into the experience of separate, isolated things. offering up in a full-hearted way the habit of becoming involved with the experience of choice. Even the possibility of it feels too threatening for some, while at the same time there is the recognition there is no threat but it is the doorway. One is the noise of a program and the other the recognition that is eternally alive inside of you. your level of maturity rides in which voice you want to follow. I, I really want to clarify some of the things you spoke about today. Because when I, when I look back just in this one day, just today, I can track many apparent decisions, even to ask this question or not ask this question. Yes. But when I slow the process down, the elemental components are arising of thoughts based on conditioned impulses that interact with one another to give the appearance of a decision. And then there's just the pure awareness that is witnessing or forming the, the field in which all of that is appearing. Yeah. Is this what you're pointing to? Absolutely. Okay. So on the, fir on the first <clears throat> piece of what was spoken <clears throat> was when it slows down enough such that the subject even when it is contracted, following the thoughts, is no longer identified that I am the thinker, but
but there remains the recognition of the subject itself. And out of this there is the seeing that it is all mechanical, that there is no chooser, which leads you into true awareness, which is non-localized, in which there is the recognition there is no such thing as thought, it only seems to appear when the subject when awareness has contracted such that it is in a particular location. So there is the seeing it is not really happening, and there also is the seeing that the appearance is all mechanical. Yet it continues. Gradually it unravels because it is all reflective, but it is like an echo. The whole dream is like an echo. There is a lag time. It has this lag before it catches up with the level of your awareness. Yeah, so, I've heard it described like an electrical fan or a spinning wheel. Yes. That once you unplug it, it it keeps spinning until the momentum is unwound. That's right. He said it, it, it reminds him of a spinning wheel, or he's heard it mentioned that it is like a spinning wheel. Once you unplug it, it gradually slows down until it comes to a stop. And I can tell you, if you stop feeding the mind, the thought processes will slow and eventually it comes to a stop. And what is discovered to be at your disposal is you can call thought up when it is necessary, but otherwise the whole system ceases to function, meaning thoughts stop arising. They require your attention. They require the experience that I am the chooser. So is just um, laying witness to the mechanical appearance of it, is that an appropriate place it to be? It is absolutely just what you have described. And one other piece I will throw in there is when there is not the appearance of choice but just idle thought playing. It is this constant self-reminding that there is no goal. Thoughts are built upon the goal in this arena, the goal of freedom. But there is no goal. How can there be a goal if in truth there is no individual? The goal is just another mechanical thought. That's right. And this description comes out of this growing rootedness in that which is aware, where the process has slowed down enough to witness the mechanics as it is playing. And then it is just to fall into true awareness, which is not subject-object, but lives without dependency on anything else for its survival.
freeing the addictive habit of being pulled into an illusion called decision making. as opposed to the direct feeling of life taking care of itself. When words are being spoken, it is so clear. It is just life. It is the energy of life. Listening is the energy of life. There is no one. It appears when the attention is distracted. Thank you all for satsang.